Access Advisory Committee. Today is December 15, 2020, and I'm calling the meeting to order. And I don't have a working watch at the moment, so you'll have to say what time it is. 11.35 p.m. Thank you. A.M., not p.m. Sorry. Cool. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any announcements? Since that's the first thing on the agenda. No. Uh, before we move on, could um, we, we need a roll call um, if every uh, if everyone could announce that you're individually here. So Tori, can you unmute yourself? So if everyone could say, uh, uh, I, do you want me to do? Oh, um, give me one second. Elise is sending me an email. Sorry, bear with me for one second. I'm on Zoom at your meeting, but I'm not connected with you. Hmm, okay. Okay, so I am, Elise is on mute. Elise, is that you? Hello, I'm trying to, it says unmute. Are you can there. you hear me? We can we hear do. you now. Okay, okay. I'm gonna name Yay. you. Okay. I, Okay, now I'm connected. I couldn't get connected. I don't know why, but I'm here. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay, so Elise is here. I'm Myra Ross. Tori, are you here? Tori, Tori Dixon is here. Darren? Erin is here. Ruth? Uh-oh. Ruth is not unmuted. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, yay. Okay, Ruth is here. <laughs> right? Okay. And Xander? Yes, here. Xander Crowley is here. Okay. Yes, I am. All right, that'll do, right? For roll call? Perfect. All right, does anyone have any announcements? No, no. Okay, no. The, um, so we have, um, we have a presentation uh, about an application for variance for the UMass Student Union. Um, we received the application, although I have to say it was very hard to read um, for me. Uh, so uh, we have applicants here. Yes, uh, they are. Um, they are just beginning to join us. Uh, we have uh, David Holmes, Derek Noble, and Carl Nelson. And they're unmuting themselves and putting their cameras on. Okay. So if you guys could uh, state your name, although I just stated your names, if you could state your names and your affiliation and uh, present your project, the overall the overall project, and um, and then explain the specific varying variance requests and the reasons of why you're making and that request. I got my phone and some clarity on the. Uh, my name is David Holmes, uh, State Building Inspector. Yeah, on purpose. I'm sorry, could, um, um, can I interrupt you? I'm sorry, is someone making a phone call? On the other side of the bed. I understand. I'm on Zoom. Please don't yell. I think Ruth needs to unmute. Needs, Ruth needs to mute. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Dave, David. Please continue. Uh, my name is David Holmes. I'm a State Building Inspector and overseeing this project as the authority having jurisdiction. I'm Derek Noble with Shepley Both Bench Architects, and I am the principal in charge for the project. Hi, good morning. My name is Carl Nelson. I am with Code Red Consultants. We're working as the fire protection, life safety, and accessibility code consultant on the project with Shepley Bullfinch. So this is not being done with any in-house UMass, UMass architecture? Um, firm or any of the UMass architects? There, there are plenty of UMass folks involved in the project. It's, um, it's an UMBA project, University of Massachusetts Building Authority project, but uh, Cleve Karens is the project manager for the university. Okay. Do you want to tell us what, um, what kind of variants or requests? Well, you could give us a broad description of the project it seems like the project is almost finished 
And so we need to know where that is and what the nature of the variance request is. Sure. Um, so the project is a complete renovation of the student union on the University of Massachusetts campus. And um, the building's about 100,000 square feet. It was a gut rehab. And as part of the design, we did some demolition and raised the ballroom from the ground, the, the first floor where it was up a level, creating a double height space and really um, trying to activate the building for the student uses. And the one of the design features within the building is a open stair. We call it the forum stair, where it's a combination of uh, communicating stair from the ground floor to the first floor with large built-in stadium or risers for sit sitting, studying, et cetera. The nature of the variance is um, the requirement for two handrails on the stair. So you can see in the image that's up, what's highlighted yellow. Um, this, the, uh, the stair here is a communicating stair and it was intended to provide access to the seats to the side as well as access from the ground floor to the first floor. And, Eric, do you um, need somebody to describe better what the image we're looking at is? Yeah, yeah, that would be helpful, actually. Sure. So this is a blow up plan of the stair. I don't know if in the application, in this view, you have the three dimensional image because it might be easier to start there. There might be give... one, but we have one visually impaired person and one blind okay. person on this committee. Okay. So if you, but we're good at understanding descriptions. When you said a stadium, uh, stair like so the whole stairway is supposed to be sort of not only for just climbing up steps but for sitting on so they're broad steps yes so there are, there is a, a there are four risers at the bottom that lead up to a landing and then from that landing that's about eight feet deep there is um an eight, a seven foot wide stair that goes up to the first floor. There are, to the side of that, there are three foot deep steps that are 18 inches high, which create um, a, a sitting studying space uh, that looks down to the ground floor. Okay. And how wide are those? Um, the overall stair is a trapezoid, so um, it is wider at the bottom than it is at the top, but the overall width, including the communicating stair, is, oh, I would say 18 feet wide at the top and probably 24 feet wide at the very bottom. So the seven foot wide staircase is not intended for seating. But the, no, it is not. The right angle or sort of right angle to it is. Correct. Okay. And so now explain what the variance request is. So the variance request is to um, eliminate the second handrail that is required. Should be right here. It would be because we're, we're using, it was intended that that stair was also access to the seating areas and the requirement for the second handrail along the stair portion el eliminates the ability to move from the stair to the seats. Okay. So anybody who needs mobility or location support from a handrail is gonna get it how? Well, um, there is there is a handrail on the other side of the stair. So we have we have one. If you're move if you're moving from the first floor down to the ground floor, you have a rail on the left side as you go down. What about if you're going up? 
you would move to the right side of the stair on the way up, you would have the handrail on your right side. Hmm. Wait a minute, say this. If you're going down, you have it on the left side. And if you're going up, you would have it on your right hand side. It's the same rail. It's the same rail, yes. So aren't people gonna like, don't we have head on collision possibility? Yes, there is that possibility. Please. For those of us who use canes, we also have weapons that can trip people coming against us. I don't see the practicality of this. However, what if you had a, a handrail in the middle? Yes, it, there is a possibility that um, we could end up with a rail and uh, limit the subdivide the width of that seven foot stair with a rail to provide a four foot wide stair on one side with two rails and a three foot access path to the seating. I think the four foot wide stair width may be tight to allow two people to pass each other going up and down but you could go on the other side also. So the seven foot stair at this point is completely built and not widenable. Correct. Where is this in the building? So the it's on the first floor is at the top of the stair and it goes down to the ground floor. So as you walk in the front doors on the west side of the building and you walk through the lobby. Which is coming, go, so coming from like the garage. Yeah. Yep. You walk in. Correct. Oh, the stairs that was that were to the right. No, there's still those. We So we have a new stair that goes up from the first floor to the second floor. Okay. Where were the um, stairs to the basement? Or to the, the well, ground floor? Or those are, those have been eliminated. Okay. And we, so we I mean, there's still, there still are three other stairs that go from the first floor down to the ground floor and up to the second floor. And there's also two new elevators. So where, where is this then located? Uh, if you walk in the lobby. And you, it's right as you walk in the lobby, there used to be a solid wall that kind of defined the lobby space that has all been eliminated. Oh, so when you walk yeah. in, okay. Okay. you see right through the building. So you see from the front door on the west side by the garage all the way to Metawampi Lawn to the classroom yeah. building through the building. Yeah, I, I'm in a wheelchair, so I don't okay. I forget. I forget where staircases are. <laughs> <laughs> so now I know what staircase you're talking about. Okay. So where, where are the elevators? Uh, if you're at the top of the stair directly to your left. Right, Derek, I think it would be helpful for them to understand, right, there's an, there's an elevator immediately to the left within about 55 feet from the stair. And then a little bit further to the left, there is an interior exit stairway with handrails on both sides that connects all floor levels. And how do you get to that from the front door? When you walk through the front door and you come into the lobby, they're they're visible right to your diagonally to your left. The alternate stairway is. The alternate stairway would be uh, when, when you get to the. To. I was th I was thinking the elevator. The alternate oh, no. stairways are both to the left and the right of the stair. Perhaps, 50 feet. Excuse me, Derek, but yes. perhaps it might be helpful to point out that the stair in question is not part of the means of egress from any level. It's simply a communicating stair between the two levels. That's an architectural term that doesn't really mean much to me. Communicating stair. Yeah. What does that exactly mean? Okay, I'm, I'm not an architect either, so <laughs> that's, that's okay. But generally it means 
when it's not part of the means of egress, it isn't your designated pathway to get out of the building. It's not part of your emergency way out of the building. Uh -huh. okay. It's an extra stairway, if you will. Okay, so okay. It's, it's meant to facilitate access to those bleachers. And yes. as a quick way to run to the second floor when you come in the door, the first floor when you come in the door. Yes, that's that's correct. Yeah, we were we were hoping, given the proximity of the elevator and interior exit stairway, to sort of that communicating stair in the adjacent, call it the forum or social stair. We we're hoping that those features would provide an adequate accessible route slash means of egress in the event of you, a user of the social stair needs to access all levels, including um, obviously that, that exit stairway with two compliant handrails on either side. For those who can use stairs. Correct. So we have the, the stair within 100 feet, about 95 feet of the adjacent social stair, as well as the elevator for those who couldn't utilize stairs uh, immediately adjacent to the social slash forum stair. Anybody have any comments? I have a question. The, uh, I am mobility impaired, use a wheelchair. So there's an elevator which I can use and or somebody with no mobility impairment whatsoever, there is another stair ways that could take them wherever they need to do. And this is the third option, but you're proposing it to have only one handrails on one side of the stairs because you don't want to make it any narrower. Am I, is my understanding accurate? Yes. Yeah, and I, the only other point I just wanted to make is I think Derek um, discussed it sort of at the onset of the presentation, but currently 521 CMR, the Architectural Access Board Regulations, um, Section 27, effectively requires all stairs to have continuous handrails on both sides. Um, there aren't really any provisions which address step dials or omissions for handrails similar to like a bleacher or other assembly type areas such as tiered lecture halls or movie theaters or, or other types of social stairs. I know in the proposed amendments to the Architectural Access Board and rules and regulations, they are proposing to add language similar to the building code as well as the 2010 edition of the ADA um, accessibility guidelines, which otherwise have an exception for aisle stairs um, needing to provide handrails on both sides where serving assembly type spaces. So currently there's, there's uh, a gap in alignment between the state accessibility code as it currently written and the ADA standards as so well the as state, the, the building the state code. one is more, more strict? Yeah, well, well, right now it, it effectively just requires handrails on both sides of all stairways. There's no provisions that address step dials or other types of spaces where serving tiered seating or a tiered assembly type spaces. Anybody else have a comment? Just uh, as the authority having jurisdiction for both of those regulations, this is one of those items that comes up occasionally that uh, when you apply both regulations, you come up with the one that's most restrictive. And again, clearly architectural access board regulation was more restrictive. Right. And in my opinion, it appears, you know, it hasn't caught up to the revisions that have been going on for years to the international building code with it with its own accessibility provisions that we basically in Massachusetts we hand those off or ignore them and apply the uh, 521 CMR requirements so it's just there there isn't a good blending as was pointed out by Mr. Nelson and uh, this leaves us with this conundrum of we need we need relief from this requirement 
if we're going to, you know, utilize the provisions that we find in the other regulations. Yeah, and the last thing, thank you, David, for, for clarifying that. The last thing I did want to bring to the, um, the board's attention is this case was an incoming case that was heard at the Architectural Access Board meeting yesterday, um, December 14th. And consistent with what David said, this, this issue does come up from time to time. I know the board has routinely heard similar cases in Boston and Cambridge, as well as a, num a number of other universities and, and colleges throughout the Commonwealth. When they reviewed the incoming case, I'm not sure if any of you were called into that hearing, um, but they did approve the single railing on the basis of the adjacencies of the nearby elevator and interior exit stairway. There were, the approval was based on three conditions. Um, number one, the large landing at the bottom of the seating that Derek described, which I think is eight feet in depth, um, cannot be used for any sort of programming or uh, it, it needs to be merely used as a landing and is not intended for presentations or other type of programmatic purposes and can only be used for or travel, which I believe is the, the design intent. However, that'll need to be abided by the university. Um, number two is the wheelchair spaces are provided at the top of the seating. Um, there's some adjacent bench seating where they specified we need to make sure that there's shoulder alignment between the top bench and the adjacent wheelchair sp spaces, which is consistent with 2010 ADA language. And then lastly, they requested wayfinding signage at both level one and level two to make it clear for users that can't utilize the social stair with the single handrail to direct them to the nearest accessible route, which is the elevator. So people are clearly understanding what that path of travel is or communicating for the, between those two floor levels where they may have disabilities or other impairments. Any comments from the committee? Well, then I have some. <clears throat> I am going to vote no. And I urge the committee to vote no, because whereas there isn't a programmatic problem in that there won't be classes scheduled there, that is social space. And it is it needs to be accessible, what you did was design-wise, you made a trapezoid, which for people with visual impairments is very difficult because square corners are how we set ourselves up to get around. Um, so you already made it difficult by making a trapezoid and by not putting any handrails for orientation, you have not made it possible for, or at least easy, easy for blind people to be safe using it that could be blind staff and that could be blind students. And the signage that you propose doesn't do a thing for blind people. So I really wish you had thought about this a priori and made the staircase wide enough so that you could, uh, so that people could actually use it safely. I mean, I totally can see the head on collision um, that I could be involved in and it wouldn't only be a problem for me because I use a white cane and I could trip people. So I think, you know, the reason for handrails is also part of demarcating space so that you know which, which way people are supposed to go on a particular part of the steps. And I, I really, this, I really feel like should have been thought about and I'm gonna vote no. We don't have any power. I'm sure the AAB will approve it, but it's, but it's, not, it's not really accessible the way it should be. May I ask, is there a, a, a tactile, uh, is there something on the ground at the bottom and the top step um, for someone that has a visual impairment that could? Um... There is there is a change in material. So the, the top step um, does have, um, and I'm blanking on the terminology, the, um, 
change of materials at the, the nosing. Um, and that is black and the stairs are white. So there is a contrast in the colors. And at the bottom, uh, they are wood stairs, which um, at the ground floor, there's a, a wood floor also. Still doesn't help with the hammer. Nope. And anybody who uses crutches, not just me, you're, you're going to say, yeah, sure, go use the elevator. But people don't, you know, I mean, it's, I, I just feel like it's an incomplete thought process. And I wish somebody had asked a whole lot a long time ago. Anyway, is, is the committee ready to uh, vote on it? I mean, does anybody else want to say anything about it? Um, Elise here, I just, I have to say, Myra, you made, you well said, I mean, I couldn't have said it better. You made some really good points and I full on agree with you. Uh, this is Saren, although I lost my visual contact with you, but I can't hear anything everything. Um, I think there are other alternatives. Maybe they should look into some ways of leading people with visual impairments uh, to the other access to different floors using the elevators and the, um, the other stair with two railing. And so I do not and since the project is already done and completed, so I kind of will am leaning toward granting their request for variance. So they, we, I am a little different than you and Elise. No, that's fine. And this is Tori. Um, you say you're going to have signage so it's clear where people need to go to get um, to the elevator, the alternative routes. Um, you could put Braille on that um, to make it, I mean, for people who read Braille, not everyone does, but um, could that happen so that... Um, I think a lot of our signage has Braille. I'll have to, I would have to double check to see if the directory signage in these locations have Braille directing people to the major program elements in the building. Okay, thank you. Ruth? Xander? No? Muted. Sorry, I was muted. I mean, oh. I think I agree with Saren on the, on some things. I also, I mean, I agree with Myra that this should have been rethought, but if we're already this, I mean, we're already so far into the project. I mean, I walked by it two days ago, not a week ago, and furniture was already being brought in and things were already, so I'm sort of it's already been built. It's not, and I'm, maybe you can try to do things and change things, but it seems like it's already sort of too far down the road to really actually change anything. I agree that there needs to be some more clear cut direction for those who are visually impaired or, you know, who can physically use the stairs, but need help navigating them or whatever uh for whatever the case may be i mean i'm not surprised that umass has gotten this far into something and then realized that they may need to change it but but also that's not on you guys necessarily that's just the university at large any other comments Okay, then we'll um, bring it to a roll call vote. I mean, we have no power over this. 
This is advisory. Um, so the question is whether or not this committee um, will uh, recommend that the variance be granted. Is that correct? Did I put that correct? Yes. And, the, and also, um, yeah, so you can um, make a motion of whether you are uh, providing a positive or negative recommendation for the approval of this variance request. Also, you you as a committee can make recommendations of of what could uh, be added to this project uh, to uh, improve it um, regarding ADA uh, matters. So I, 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 if I'm hearing correctly, uh, some of the members have indicated that could there be, if it's not already part of the plan, could UMass put Braille on these on the wayfinding signs? It, it, am I hearing that correctly? So in, in part of your motion, if that is something that the committee as a whole wants to recommend that UMass um, provide that accommodation, I, I think that that would be very useful to include in your motion. Okay, who, uh, would anyone like to make a motion? So I'm gonna make a motion that we vote. I'll second Tori's motion. And what would the motion be, Tori? What 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 are you, so, what are you moving? I mean, that we vote on, I mean, I can't speak for you, um, but that we vote whatever way we feel about the project and let them move. So well, Tori, do you want to make a motion that you that want to provide it. a positive recommendation? With, oh, with yes. Okay. Yes. And with, you with the stipulation that UMass um add the braille to the the signage yeah actually i I'm second gonna... that motion okay so it's um but now myra would ask for is there a discussion yeah is there any discussion i have a question to the architects actually and not the well whoever yes um okay uh do you know anything about uh auditory beacons I have not had experience with them. Um, they're sort of going out now. It has to do with interior wayfinding. And I think that there are some things that have to do with interior wayfinding. Do you understand my concern about this lack of handrail to go in each direction? Yes, I do. Okay. And I think it is actually a serious concern because it's a safety concern. It's not only, it's not only a, a convenience concern, and a lack of equality or equity and social access concern, but it is a safety concern. So I guess I would like you to look into, I'm not sure how you would do it because I haven't been in the space and I'm not sure how an auditory beacon would help you, but there are things that are, there are beacons that don't admit any sound to anybody who's not using a phone, but you can, you can pick up where beacons are in your phone. Mm -hmm. um, and it tells you which way to go to get to it, um, to get, you know, like, it, so it attracts you to the beacon by telling you how far you have to go and what direction you have to go. Um, and people use them with their apps for iPhones and Androids. Um, actually, there are some people at UMass and engineering who were developing some of these. I'm not sure where they are right now, but, um, you know, they were using them in Whitmore um, at one point to help people find offices. Um, and it was experimental, and I'm not sure it was Dr. Gantz in engineering at UMass. Um, and I don't know, I mean, you know, nationally, I haven't heard about her projects, although she did do some of the MBTA stations, I think. Um, and I'm wondering if beacons or any other kind of auditory things with receptors in a phone would be helpful. Since I haven't been in the space, I don't know, but that wouldn't necessarily negate the problem of the head-on collision on the staircase. So, and they're, you know, like we're dealing with 18 to 21 year olds, they run up the stairs, they're not always looking where they're going or who else is there. True. So I, I do think that this is a big problem. Anyway, I, I would, you know, unfortunately, as I said, you already built it. So I don't know what can be done about it. And that's why I'm going to vote no. But um, the rest of the committee is not going to vote no. So um, 
I'll call for a vote, hoping that you will look into auditory signals that could be helpful. Does that make any sense? That makes sense. Okay, so um, let's do a roll call on Tori's motion to approve um, the request. Um, Tori? Yep. We don't hear you. Uh oh. Saren? Yes, I go with that. Okay, Tori, are you? Back? Yes. Okay, yes. Good. Okay. Um, Elise? Uh, I'm going to have to vote no. I'm sorry, guys. Ruth? Uh oh. She's muted. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Xander? Yes. And me? No. So it's what? Five, four to two. But I hope that when you, I hope that the, that we actually, that, that our um, statement, I don't know who writes up the statement that we voted four to two, but with that we have certain concerns. I don't know who writes that up. Do we do that? I uh, will provide an email correspondence to MAAB as well as uh, 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 the three gentlemen here today. Okay, so it should say something about the concern on the staircase um, regarding, uh, you know, safety and also the um, possibility of using auditory beacons, electronic beacons to make it a little easier, although I don't, that doesn't solve my problem. Sure, sure. No problem. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for the presentation. Um, and I guess if there is nothing else to say, we should move on. Well, thank you for your time and your comments. And um, I look forward to getting the written meeting notes so I could pass them along and discuss them with the UMass PM project manager. Perfect. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Could I comment further? Yeah, sure. This is David Holmes, the state inspector. Uh, um, I have, Myra, I have the same concerns you do as, uh, I, I guess I'm not in necessarily the elderly category, but I'm, I'm in an age where body parts are starting to wear out and move, maneuvering stairs is not my favorite thing anymore. Right. Okay. Um, so handrails are my friend and mm -hmm. have been for a long time and I'm particularly pay attention to them on all my projects. Um, so this one came up as a, gee, how come there's nothing here? Um, and then, then I realized this has come before me before and I haven't, apparently I missed it on maybe a couple other projects, but it drew my attention a little stronger this time. And I have the same concerns you do. So back to Derek, just a back to what Myra had offered up originally. What about the handrails four feet apart with the balance of three feet on the stairs? Is that workable or not? I'll have to go through the construction details of that. Um, it's uh, it's a, I, I have, there's a, there's a cost implication. Obviously, Obviously. there's a safety implication um, it, and I'd have to discuss it with UMass and see what's, um, if it's functionally doable with the way things are constructed right now, mm -hmm. we may have to take apart the stair in order to redo, rework the whole piece. Right, well, I'm just bringing it up. It's, it's an obvious concern and yes. also, um, just to recognize you, Myra, for that, that I, I share share what you're saying and okay, share the same you. same thought process that, you know, it's a long way down. You don't want to be uh, rolling down the stairs. It's not a no. good thing. No. Just want when to make a statement. This is Saren. Uh, I don't want to be unfair to Myra. I totally understand what she's going through. Totally. I wish we had known about this beforehand so we could give our suggestions to the project before it was in place. But 
this is after the fact and I hate to create extra costs to the state university doing something where I looked as there are alternative more secure sites and being a person with disability for 40 some years I learned to experience that I cannot really take the if I don't feel safe about doing something I don't take that route and I'll try to see if there's another alternative route you know so I don't want to put myself in a situation that I don't understand the issues Myra is bringing when is the building supposed to theoretically be open to um, the public? It will I mean, be I know open Dave, you're the state inspector. If you're the state inspector, then it's on some level kind of up to you it is. <laughs> when the building is open. But when does the university the, the target the target be would be February first when students come back on campus when the the spring semester starts. Okay. And at this point, it has a temporary. Certificate yeah. of use and occupancy for four occupants only, which are basically high end staff in the building. I have a question. Is there enough width to provide a ra railing in the center of the aisle? So um, that's, that's what, what they were saying. That's what I was asking. Three. Three. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Narrow. Yeah. Um, that's actually, what I was saying. If you had done, if you'd come before, if it were nine feet, you could put it in the middle. It would be no problem whatsoever. It would be perfect. Our our stair up from the first floor to the second floor is that exact situation where it's a nine foot stair with a rail up the middle. Right, and that's perfectly safe. Mm -hmm. um, but this one is not, and I mean, it's true that it would be expensive for you to rebuild it but boy oh boy oh boy I can see people falling down the stairs kids run you know I, I mean do you think everybody watches where they're going they <laughs> don't <laughs> and there's no demarcation of which way you're supposed to go on the stairway now yeah. even if there is people don't always go the right way but at least it is a it's a traffic definer to have a stair to have a handrail in the middle or or you know something like that. So um, I, I think that there is potential for UMass to have to pay a lot of money to somebody about this someday. I, I'm very concerned about it. I agree with what Myra just said. I also would like to point out that there are a lot of different things on UMass's campus that are should be and should have long ago been ways that lots of people could have made lots of money based on the inaccessibility and incorrect <laughs> oh i'm not layout. talking inaccessibility i'm talking accident anyway um you know unless anybody wants to bring it for reconsideration i think we might be done with it is are people comfortable with the way they voted i do sounds like people are yeah yes Okay. All right. So um, I, um, you've heard the conversation. Did somebody try um, to speak? Elise. Okay. I'm so, I'm sorry for cutting in. I'm just. We haven't voted yet, right? But we did. What was, we did? We did. Yeah. Yes. We, we voted four to two in favor. You and I voted okay. against. Okay. Well, perhaps this will be a learning lesson uh, for. Yes for all parties um and i i strongly sus suspect that the daac members here won't forget this so um so in the future when when there is a sort of auditorium or whatever the reason may be but here it's because you're trying to facilitate uh, a social staircase but um you know, it, it sounds like the DAAC strongly feels that railings should be provided on both sides um, a, as a matter of ADA. Uh, of, or in the middle. Uh, or in the middle out of ADA improvements, but also for everyone, for all users. Yeah. Um, um, a potential hazardous situation, which may or may Maureen, I, um, One other just quick thought. I, I think everyone on the board made some some really good suggestions. I thought a lot of the points were valid, especially some of the points Myra brought up in terms of 
potential collisions. One thing I would like to bring to the board's attention is I believe currently um, there are red line proposed changes to the architectural access board rules and regulations. I don't believe any public comment period has occurred or there's any sort of movement at the Secretary of State's end in terms of promulgating those new changes, at least for the immediate future. But as I mentioned earlier, I believe there are changes being proposed to align the handrail allowances with the building code, which would effectively allow handrails on both sides or on either one of the sides or in the middle. And if the board has concerns associated with providing a handrail just on a single side, instead of the center, there could be opportunities here to bring up some of these concerns in a public forum and voice those to the state for consideration before these changes come into effect. Do you have any idea what timeline we might be talking about? I think, I mean, the, the red line comments have been in effect um, and not necessarily promulgated sort of in draft format for the better part of two, two and a half years. I haven't received an update from the board just in terms of that updated timeline. David, you may actually have more knowledge on the state side than I do. We've been tracking it closely just to understand implications on the designs associated with projects, but there are substantial changes occurring in terms of trying to align that state accessibility code with federal standards, especially as it relates to enforcing that code, not just on public buildings and structures, but also including requirements associated with employee work areas. Um, so Myra, I don't have an answer for you, but I'm hopeful that the board starts to make some progress on the, the promulgation um, next year. Thank you very much. This is real. You know, you know that, um, you know that, you know, in old buildings everywhere, there are lots of staircases with handrails on only one side. Um, but in new construction, uh, I think the state current regulations have make a lot of sense and they're protective and it's always good to be more restrictive than the feds anyway okay um thank you for that information i really do appreciate it um and uh, i'll be looking forward to using the building but i probably won't use that staircase <laughs> great thank, thank you, you so much I'm excited about the building. I've walked past it a couple times and I even, last time I walked past it, the doors were open because they were moving furniture in. So I sort of looked in <laughs> farther. It's, it's gorgeous. It's an exciting space now. It's updated. Yeah, not the old Fine. smelly, stale, no. gross <laughs> building anymore. <laughs> All right. Well, you're <laughs> welcome to. Uh, uh, we, we're going to move on on to other okay. items. Uh, you Thank are... you very much. I really appreciate it, gentlemen. Thank yes. you. You're welcome Thank to stay you. on, or or feel free to exit the meeting if if. Thank you very much. It was good to hear all your points of view and yes. uh, opens yeah, my eyes. For, thank you for your openness to the comments. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, the next thing on the agenda was about the self-evaluation. Yeah, to so the ADA plan. Um, so I keep on saying we're still reviewing it, but we very, uh, staff is still reviewing the, the draft ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. Um, uh, our contract with the consultants is winding down at the end of this month. So we have been um, carefully reviewing everything to make sure everything is is factually is factually uh, true, and um, I hope to provide the, the committee a presentation on this project in the near future. I'm thinking either either at the January meeting or at the February meeting. Um, and uh, let me get my notes out. Um, there's been some. And so with that, and so uh, I have been um, talking to each of the department heads uh, in the town of Amherst, which has been really interesting because this is not normally what I do uh, as a planner. Um, so it's been interesting to hear uh, what each department, you know, what they really do. And, uh, but, uh, but here specifically, talk about what they do uh, in 
and uh, in regards of ADA improvements. So the plan gets into not only um, facilities like town buildings, parks, parking lots, trails, it also gets into the website, it gets into um, meeting, posting meetings, agendas, um, it gets into social media, um, it gets into procurement and contracts, gets into um, uh, information that we provide our employees and, and volunteers, um, and uh, making sure that all this information uh, is being done and uh, is provided to the public and to employees. So um, just being very clear about what are the non-discrimination um, policies, what is our ADA policy. Um, I'm sorry, Ruth, can I put you on mute because there's a lot of back noise. Sure. Okay. Um, and one part of this is I got to speak to, so I spoke with uh, the town manager and the assistant town manager, uh, so Paul Blockerman and Dave Zomack about this. And uh, we, um, and I was giving them an update about talking with uh, department heads. And I, you know, discussed, okay, so let's talk about implementation and, and funding opportunities. And uh, it was discussed, well, should this be part of the capital budget? And they said, yes. So I spoke to our finance director last Friday and, uh, uh, and uh, we are discussing, um, he's in agreement that yes, this should be part of the capital budget for making ADA improvements in towns, in, in this town, sorry. And that, um, so we're, we're, we're we need to uh, finalize what that amount would be. So per, per so year. Can so I ask really what good. that means? Like I could see that meaning two things. It could mean that there's a line item for ADA improvements in the capital budget. And it could mean that any proposed project has to have ADA improvements as line items in their proposals. What exactly um, are you meaning? So what it would mean is that um, every every time that we are working on the capital bu budget for each year, we would line item projects that are identified, physical barriers or programmatic barriers that are identified in this transition plan. And we would be specifically uh, making those projects as part of the capital budget. You are awesome, Maureen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, That's and I will great. say, and then, um, so I, I've been doing a, I've been very much advocating for this committee and for ADA improvements. So um, uh, I um, am trying to ensure that all grants in town that uh, the town is applying for that if applicable, that there be ADA improvements as part of the grant. So, um, so for instance, uh, the TAM received a mass DOT project to provide down, if you've noticed in downtown, there has been downtown dining. Um, there were some ADA improvements as part of that package uh, grant. And so um, the, the town, um, that's just one example. Um, the town um, is coming up with a list of community development block grant proposals for town projects. They're due on Friday. And I asked staff, is ADA improvements an eligible activity for this grant? And they said, yes. And so uh, we have some ADA uh, projects that will be part of this proposal including redoing the northern, the north side of Kellogg Street sidewalk, which is on the side of the post office. Mm -hmm. um, it will also include um, redoing part of the sidewalk that connects from Kellogg Street to the Bang Center and uh, redoing the entranceway and outdoor space to the Bang Center. Um, so there is an outdoor space outside of room 101 
and then the threshold and the door there um, are have ADA problems. So that is one project. Another project is uh, providing ADA improvements to the Munson Library. Um, and so uh, we're fleshing out the details. I, I personally went to the Munson Library last Thursday morning to take a look at, at each of, uh, I did a walk around and I took photographs to really- well, The bathroom is in the basement. How are you gonna do that? So- I mean, There are stairs to get into the Munson Library in the first place. Yeah, so I, please keep Not in mind that building. we can't make this building or outside completely ADA in one grant cycle because um, any improvement, it, it costs a significant amount of money. So, um, the thought is, do we make the, if we only could do one door, for instance, do we make the front door ADA compliant, making the front walkway to the road, uh, fix that up because there might be some sloping issues. And then- um, Well, it's a long walkway, so you could actually make it into a ramp. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then playing around with the, so there's two on-street, ADA parking spots, but there's uh, hedges that are pretty close to the to those parking spots. So we are uh, thinking about um, either removing part of the hedge um, and uh, making them um, instead of parallel, could we make them like a, a regular sort of pull in um, parking spot? Or the other thought process is uh, there's a loading area. How about if we put a bollard so cars can't go down there unless they have to. So then you would put a bollard up. So say if there needs to be uh, like a, a an actual a loading item that's there's equipment that needs to go in and then, and then you would have a truck and then a bollard would go up. Uh, but for any other times that a vehicle isn't loading, unloading, the baller goes up. And so that becomes a ADA walkway and then providing ADA spaces behind the building, which is adjacent to the existing ADA entrance to the building. Which is the one to the large room there? Yes, and that's, that's, uh, okay. Okay. that's where people vote. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I believe there's a, um, a maybe a meeting space back there um, my next, my next field trip is to go back and go inside. I've never actually been inside the Munson library. Um, and so right now, later today, I have a meeting with Rob Mora, the building commissioner and Jeremiah LaPlante, who is our, uh, town, uh, town's uh, facility manager. So he, um, he deals, uh, he's very, uh, his job is to address all issues with our town buildings or for the buildings that he's assigned to, which is the Munson Library. So the three of us are going to talk in detail about the costs, uh, about the, um, the cost difference between both of these uh, alternative plans, because it's either gonna be the front door or we're gonna address uh, the back door and trying to make that, uh, uh, ADA accessible with providing parking in the back um, and see, so we only have $100,000, which sounds like a lot of money. It really isn't. So um, we need to figure out uh, which, which would make more sense. And um, so the, the front door, we don't know if that's a $100,000 job or a $500,000 job because it's about replacing the doorways. It's uh, getting uh, regrading the the grant the 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 threshold, which is very uneven, and regrading the walkway leading up to it as well. So we um, so Jeremiah is is looking into that as we speak right now. Um, so so that's that project, um, and so those are the those are the projects that uh, the town will be um, proposing to the uh, CDBG uh, committee, um, I guess next month for ADA improvements. Um, and again, they're due, I believe at fr 12 noon this Friday. So I'll be busy working on that. But uh, 
but it, it's been really exciting um, to uh, to uh, use this transition plan to our benefit and say, oh, hot off the press, um, whenever there's a project and uh, or a grant, and um, if it's about a specific building or a park or a trail, and I can refer to this plan and say, oh, well, it's been identified in this plan that these are the barriers um, and they should be incorporated in your project or grant application. So it, it's been exciting to use that as, as um, as a guiding document. Can I insert yeah. a few sentences? Okay. Um, I know Monson Library very well because that's my voting place. Yep. And uh, the door, they put electric door openers there. And I think the electric door opener opens one of the doors. I, I'm not very uh my memory might be failing me so if both wings could open and i think they did nice changes to the platform that gets you from the street into the entrance door so that was pretty good i thought because if it is cobblestones it's very bumpy to yep. ride on it with a wheelchair so wow. that was addressed and the door opener was, I think it was quite narrow, but if two wings could open, that might provide easy access. But the parking places, the hedges, I know I experienced that all the time. Yeah. So that could be a um, fixed by some landscaping redesigns. But then in, in that a capital budget line amount for ADA improvements, a thought came to my mind. I remember a couple of meetings ago, Myra was giving example from the sidewalks by in front of her house and in her, in her neighborhood. How about somebody in a wheelchair cannot get from one side of the sidewalk to down to the street level. And I know it is not only so with Myra's sidewalk. Where I live in Amherst Wood, they have sidewalks, but you cannot get onto the sidewalk or down from the sidewalk because they don't have any curb cuts. So I my proposal is to do to make a change in the building uh, status that this town grants people when they ask for planning, I mean, for the plans to be approved, that with every sidewalk, there has to be access to the street level, whether it is requested or not. That is a must with the design projects. Could we put something and then take turns and grant money for each neighborhood to provide that access for all the existing sidewalks, like in Myra streets, like in Amherst or any other place. How many times have I experienced this personally myself? I get on a sidewalk and on the other side of the sidewalk, there is no place for me to come down in a, with a wheelchair. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. That's really yeah. helpful. I just- so I, I want to- <clears throat> I want to attach something to what Saren just said, because I think that what she just said is very important and valuable. The Kellogg Street in the downtown area, Kellogg, the Kellogg Street sidewalks are the worst, have always been the worst. That stupid tree that sure. is just in the sidewalk has ruined that sidewalk. The roots. The one of the, the, the but the other thing that I have noticed, in fact, on Saturday, I fell. Uh -huh. um, is the very pretty, like brick edging of the sidewalk by in front of the CVS where you're coming up the curb cut is so whole, it has is so filled with hole. It's very pretty, but totally impractical because those bricks wear away so much faster than the cement sidewalks. And I, it doesn't feel like filling in those holes which should or would cost much more than it would fill would to 
spill in a pothole, but those are so dangerous that every time I cross the street there, which, you know, isn't infrequent, I have to sort of go, okay, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. So if they're gonna do the Kellogg Street sidewalks, if they could maybe spend half a day filling in the holes in this, the crosswalk between Kellogg Street and the other side of Pleasant Street. Yeah. That now, would wasn't be that in the proposal in the grant that you did more ginormous that, that crosswalk? Yeah, I, so um, yeah, thank you, Xander. Um, I will be um, actually one of the department heads that I I've been stall uh, that I will be talking to is the DPW director and um, about the transition plan, but also to ask what his schedule is to fill in um, the cracks and um, missing pieces of of sidewalks and crosswalks in downtown as they are as so they, dangerous yeah they're very hazardous to all to all yeah. uh, all users but mm -hmm. uh, I, I will add that so um the town uh applied for a ada improvement grant through the mass office of disability i think i applied in mm, october i should be knowing by the end of this month uh, it would be crosswalk replacements at the intersection of Kellogg and North Pleasant Street. So um, those, if we do receive that grant, will um, those will be redone by the end of this June, June 2021. But, in but, the but Maureen, these things, which is very important for people with disabilities, should not be waiting for a grant to be approved or not, in my opinion. I think it there should be some money set aside automatically for that because we cannot find for more people to fall on those like unfortunate thing that Sander experienced yeah. last weekend. You know, they they are they should be a top priority. And if we get the funding, so be it, then they supplement that. Mm -hmm. with that. Thank you, uh, Saren. Saren, can I get back to, uh, thank you for those comments to both of you. Um, Saren, can I uh, get back to your comments about the Munson Center? When you talked about the automatic door opener, were you talking about the door in the back to get to the basement or were you talking about the door in the front? About how you wish there that both doors had a automatic. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know what is the front, what is the back I door. Think they call I only the enter large, one act, door. It's just a large activity room with the wood floor. The door goes into back, right? So but it goes. It, it goes through a garden. Mm -hmm. So when you park on a street, on that street, yep. you go through a garden, and there's a walkway. And the library is on the left, which I have never tried to enter it. And then there is this big, heavy, uh, very old, beautiful looking door I'm talking about. Yep, yep. And there's a, a brick arch that's in front of it. And yes. so one of the doors does have a uh, automatic door opener. But yes. if, I, if I heard you correctly, you would like to have both doors be able so both, to- Both wings, I mean. Yes, I think there are two wings to the door because every time I go there and I uh, I'm usually with somebody and somebody tries to open the other wing and I have gone there enough times. So I said, I just fit there. But if I will myself, I will hurt my knuckles because it's not that wide. So if they can open the both wings with that electric door. Yep. I think that's what, but, but since the last couple of times I didn't go there and I voted in other places or with absentee voting. Mm -hmm. So my yeah. recollection is from like two years ago. I have a follow-up question. Do you use that door to get to the voting location? Yes. yes, you enter that from that door and you make a very quick right. Got it. And then it's like a, people are waiting in a line and then you go through the big room and you register yourself and then 
you leave that big room from another door, which is again, very tight, but doable, doable. Got it. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, you go through the front door to vote, but the official ADA entrance to that building currently is going behind the building. Um, I and then don't even know where behind the building because I usually park in the uh, the uh, the church's parking sure. lot. Okay. Well, this and is really useful information. Are you saying you do go through the front door, Saren, to get in? Myra, to tell you the truth, I don't know what is the front door, what is the oh, back the front door. door is I the only door thought that... there was one door. The front door faces out onto East. Uh, oh, southeast yeah. street yeah I think okay so that's the door i always yeah. use oh, okay. Okay. okay all right well this is really helpful i haven't been since been probably 15 years since contra dancing in high school but that was the door we used right and you could get in okay mm -hmm. okay with that big old antique door yeah, right heavy. yeah yeah a heavy door okay. and before there was no electric openers there and no. when they did that and I say way that's great because I could never open it on my own yeah. I but usually when I go there just for voting there are pe people that are in line and they would hold the door open and everybody was concerned you know with my entrance so that solved one problem but for me it is just very tight sure Maureen right, can I ask well, a question sense. about the grant situation yep, yep. Are there opportunities for community members or members of this committee to help out with writing grants, to write their own grants, um, places that grants could be available? Uh, you know, the town staff uh, traditionally writes grants, uh, but, you know, we love to get your input about any grants. And, and in fact, I need to find out what the process for the CDBG grants are. So once it goes to a committee, there's probably a public hearing. And I would love for this committee to provide a, a letter of recommendation uh, for for these grants. Um, I think that would go um, a long way. But you so know, is that for this meeting? Or is that for the after you get the information more? Uh, yeah, but then at the next meeting, we can sort that out. But and then also Xander. So um, uh, I have, on behalf of the town, I have applied uh, for the Mass Office of Disability Grant uh, ADA improvement for the last two years in a row. And both times, um, while um, while writing the grant, I have asked for this committee's input. So there there are opportunities to provide input because that goes a long way. Because you you know you are you are the town's representatives of 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 the disability community so uh, hearing and understanding that perspective um as users is so it goes a long way much longer a, a longer way than any architect and i have one other question that's unrelated to this but how do we do we just if there are things that we think of that we think that this committee should talk about should we just email you sure yes because yeah, as can. when we met with the umass they're not umass people but the the state inspector the fire inspector made me think of uh when i was at the high school and then when i was in at umass and still as far as i know this is still amherst fire department's plan universally if you are in a wheelchair and you are not on a floor and you do not have an easy way out of whatever building you are in and the fire alarms go off and they know that it's not a real they like check the building to make sure it's not a real fire they expect you to stand or to wait in the building until it's over instead of coming and getting you which meant that every time that in the three years i was at the high school they would have a fire drill every semester. So it was six fire drills. And every single time but one, I was on the only floor that I couldn't get off. So I would have to sit there through the fire drill with sensory processing disorder and 
uh, you know, usually got a headache after because sitting through a fire drill is a lot. I work at UMass now and eh and knows where I work, but if I'm not in my office and I'm on a floor that's not accessible and I have no egress out of the building, Amherst Fire Department, unless there's an actual risk of fire, will not come and get me. And they just leave you there. And their thing is, well, we don't want to risk pulling you out, like having somebody get hurt and taking you out if it's only a drill. That was their argument when my parents and I <sighs> tried to argue That's this when I was in so high school. And I've tried to argue this again and again and again. And that's still the argument that I get is, well, we don't want to put firefighters at risk if it's not a, if there's not a fire. And I, uh, Xander, I lived through this at my prior employment and my office was upstairs. The only access is through two stairs on both sides of the corridors. Yep and the elevator yep. in case of fire the elevator is will not Shut work yeah. and they said when i questioned that they said on both ends outside there is fire safe area when the doors are closed so you're safe there until they come to your rescue we solve sort of solve that problem by getting a portable ramp that is used to provide egress down the stairs safely by only one person. It doesn't have to be a very, very strong person. So maybe you can push where you work to provide, to get one of those. Yeah, where I work currently, I mean, I'm currently working from home, but where I work normally on campus, is a first floor of office. But if I happen to be going to speak to another faculty member who's in a different portion of the department, you know, building or or had at a meeting, I mean, there was a meeting a couple years ago that I was at uh, with the vice chancellor for student affairs and it's on the third floor of Whitmore and the electricity went out in the building. There was some snowstorm and we were in the building and the electricity went out and sort of looked at each other and went, well, hopefully the electricity goes back on. Otherwise, somebody at this meeting is going to have to carry me down the three, the two flight or the one flight of stairs to get me to the second floor so that I can get out. So I, it's just a thing that I would like, maybe we could have yeah, the it's, fire it's chief. A, it's a good idea to have that as an agenda. Talk to us and hear from us and say, no, this is not, this is not a viable plan. This is a bad plan. Please change it. <laughs> Um, I can certainly, I can certainly talk to the fire department. Um, I would need to ask the town manager if, uh, if uh, the fire department department chief is available. Um, it's, just, to, it's not an emergency issue. It's not something that I think we can solve next month, next meeting. But it's, mm -hmm. I was as I as I saw the fire inspector guy, I was like, oh, that issue, that issue that I haven't thought about in a long time <laughs> that's a thing that maybe we should talk about it's a very bad plan <laughs> such a bad plan <laughs> i need to excuse myself i need to go to the bathroom so you guys are probably probably going to be done yes but... we'll be wrapping up in a few minutes okay, okay. all right nice tori, to see you tori you, uh, tori before you go did you um i only provided one set of meeting minutes yes. okay. um did you have any issues with that no, you don't have to go. That's fine too. But if you yeah. had, you're fine. I don't believe so. No. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Bye. Take care. Sorry. Bye. Bye. You, Tori. Oh, happy holidays. Oh, you, you too. too. Oh, to you too. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Okay. Hard so to believe it is that time of the year, right? You know, with all the, the next, things going it'll on. It'll feel like it. It'll feel like it tomorrow when it snows. Um. <laughs> I. Uh. Let's see. The next item. Uh, committee or commission I haven't done anything about has anyone else so I have an update does anyone else I, I have an update oh wow okay so I um, there's a lot of moving parts going on in town uh, specifically because of COVID but in general um, there's always always 50 things going on at the same time 
and also updating the ADA plan um, has been very time consuming and, and it will be because now we're getting to the real meat of it, which is implementing it and finding funding. Um, so I spoke to my supervisor about um, about the the discussion of becoming a commission and I have been informed that the town will not be ex exploring this as a, a, um, a as a uh, will not be exploring this due to uh, very limited um, staffing. Um, I, 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 I uh, staff three boards. So you're one of two other boards. I staff the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Design Review Board. Um, and then I'm also applying for grants and and am project manager to you know plan. So for instance, this transition plan. But that's just one that's just one item um, of many. And so uh, staff does not have time to look into becoming a uh, commission on disabilities. Um, I have been told that if DA if members of this committee want to explore this um, on your own time, um, that would be fine. And if you want to okay. look into it and and then provide your findings at meetings, that would be fine. Um, Does I anyone want to take it on? Mm -hmm. Jules Maybe project. in January, but not right now. Yeah, well. Not, you know, yeah. uh, there was one person who was a... I can't even remember, but I can brainstorm with Joe Tringale. And uh, he was working at a state organization in Boston. And he actually came to one of our, attended one of the meetings and he was very knowledgeable on that. Let me see if we can get somebody to join us with a Zoom meeting or okay, something. Okay, if you want to talk to Joe and find out who that okay. person is, we can reach out to that person. That would be great. Okay. Charlie? Was, right. it Char was it Charlie? No, it wasn't. Okay. And Money I have card, you mean, right? Okay. Yeah, because it could. No, it was somebody from just another commission. Charlie oh, okay. was in the MRC. Okay. okay. And then I just had two other points to bring up about this discussion, which is. Um, what, what are we doing that, what are we doing, um, you know, what aren't we doing that a commission can do? Um, and I did speak to uh, a staff liaison in Greenfield who ha does have a commission and um, it seems very similar to what we're doing now. And um, I, I then uh, spoke again with with uh, Christine Brestrup, uh, the planning director, and she offered that if this committee wants to have an opportunity to review uh, like larger projects for special permits, for example, like a, a mixed use building, a commercial building, apartment building, stuff that would affect um, um the public um uh, that she would um would definitely entertain that you know this committee could have an opportunity to provide comment but it wouldn't be for single family housing or duplexes or or because someone wants to add a shed in the backyard it wouldn't be something that's for a minor project it would be for more uh it would be for larger projects that would impact um, the general public. And I think we would need to have more than one meeting a month to do that. So people would have to be willing to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think one of the major things, Maureen, was um, in a commission, some of the, one of the things we, we discussed was like the parking violations. This commission will keep a certain portion of it. And then which will be used for some access projects, which we would support. Sure. So you know, that I, gave I, us some, some a power to do that. And also we didn't think that our recommendations that we weren't really looked as with any 
clout, you know, being a committee. Whereas if you're a commission, we thought they would take you more seriously, your recommendations. Okay, Sarah, look into one getting that guy and we can ask all those questions. Friend, like we, you know, you have ideas about what it might do. Let's talk to that, uh, to anybody who's really knowledgeable. If you want to get the name of somebody, um, then we could invite that person. We could get, you know, the truth of the matter so we could find out what it would really do for us and what we would have to do in return that would be different than what we do now. Can I make a suggestion okay. that we talk about this next meeting? Because it is one o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Yes, um, and so with that, when, let me look at my calendar. Um, so we meet on the second Tuesday of each January month. January twelfth. Um, so the next meeting, we, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, at eleven thirty. Okay, and I guess next time we'll we'll approve the meeting minutes, and hopefully I'll have the the other minutes ready uh -oh. as well. Elise, do you have a seeing eye dog, or is yours from somewhere else? Uh, she's from Guide Dogs for the Blind. Okay, because I um, I sent Maureen a note about seeing eye dog is not really a generic term. Seeing eye dog yeah. is a specific company that there's a specific organization that provides dogs. There are lots of guide dog companies, so they just call them guide dogs. Oh, oh, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. And so we, will, we will very possibly have another member at the next meeting. Um, we interviewed two people who were both really good. Um, did and Chris Blount to, never, did he end up? He uh, suddenly, he realized that um, for a variety of reasons, he just didn't have enough time. He just didn't realize. <laughs> that. Okay, so, so we our will next likely have another meeting. January 12th? We may well have another meet, a member at the January 12th meeting, right? Because yes. Paul said it might be appointed appointment on the 21st. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it would depend on. I have to step off because I have to go to another meeting. I'll see you guys. Okay. Isaac, thank, thank you. you. Uh, January yeah. 12th. Um, so what was I going to say? Uh, it, I think it would depend on when the when Marty Smith uh, gets sworn in by the town clerk. So that would be a her. It would be very helpful for writing to the architectural access board about maintaining the state regulations instead of going to the less restrictive ADA. I thought that she would be really helpful for that. I don't know if she agrees with it, but the state building inspector sure seemed to. Correct. You know, we can add that back to the agenda for the next time. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, uh, let's put that on. That was, I'm, that was a very nice suggestion. Very they were very, <laughs> They, I, I gotta say, uh, I thought in particular that those three individuals were very helpful and um, had provided- The fact is we should have never gotten to this point in the first place. And that's really the tragedy of it all. And the inspector sort of took responsibility for that. But mm -hmm. that's still, you know, it is a dangerous uh, proposal that they have. Yeah. It, it's, it's a dangerous proposal. Anyway. Um, Okay, so I need I have a to go. To adjourn. Yep. Can we have a motion to adjourn? All right, I move we adjourn. <laughs> we have a second. Second that. Okay. All in favor of adjournment, Elise? Yep. Saren? Yes. Ruth? I guess she's muted. Yeah, she might be muted. She and I'll vote yes. Um, right. I, don't, I don't know where Ruth is. Is she still on there? She is. OK, she's just muted. Hmm. All right. Uh, well, All right. we'll just assume she voted yes. <laughs> I agree. All right, oh, happy, well, happy holidays. All right, thank you. Too. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank happy you. Holidays. Bye. Be healthy. Bye. Bye. Bye.